Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to our program on Kardec Radio. And now, here's our host, Dr. Vanessa Ancelone. Welcome, dear listener, to Kardec Radio. This is the last show of the year 2011, and we have great news for you. It's all about the Spiritist view on Jesus. Why is it so important Christmas has just passed? Why are we still talking about Jesus? Is Jesus the best way to set us the mold for the new year? A so special and much expected year, 2012. And here we are at Kardec Radio to nourish your soul and share with you the best of the best in terms of spiritism. It's all about Jesus. Chico Xavier, when he was still incarnated, he said, you know, when we talk about the new year, we talk about new beginnings. And he says, though nobody can go back and make a new beginning, anyone can start over and make a new ending. Well, dear listener, as we think of the new year, we're thinking about true happiness. We want to be happy. We truly want to be happy. Everybody says to one another, Happy New Year. We want to be happy. But where do we want to be happy? How can we be happy? Then, if we go to the Spirit Book by Alan Kardec, question and answer 614. It's all about the pathway to happiness. The Illuminated Spirit said to Kardec, That it is the only way to achieve happiness is through the fulfillment of God's laws. The natural laws of life, the divine laws. Which are eternal and immutable as God is. And the question is, how can we know how to fulfill God's laws? Good question. Kardec asked this very same question. If happiness depends on the fulfillment of God's laws, how can we fulfill it? Then, if we go exactly to question 621, Kardec asked, where is God's law written? And the answer is very straightforward and clear. In the conscience. It is inside of our conscience that we carry God's laws. So inside of ourselves, we find the answers to what is right, to what is wrong. But then how we, in some way and form, don't remember or forget or disregard disregard it? Well, the Spirit said that often we forget and disregard them and we need to be reminded of them. And that's the reason why they explain that throughout ancient times in humankind's history, we have always received missionary men and women who came with the very mission to remind us of the laws of God, which are the true prophets. And then the ultimate question. Kardec asked, what is the perfect standard that God has offered to humanity as guide and model? Let us remember, dear listener, God is the best educator of all. And He's an educator. He doesn't punish us. On the contrary, He actually educates us kindly, compassionately, and with unconditional force. And He sent a perfect guided model. And here's how the Spirit was look at Jesus. Jesus is our guide and model. And as Kardec comments in this question, 625, Jesus is the highest standard of moral perfection to which humankind may aspire on earth. God offers him as the most perfect model and his teachings is the purest expression of God's law. Because he was animated by the divine spirit and was the purest being that has ever walked the earth. Dear listener, we're talking about Jesus as the model, model of the highest virtue, love. Leon Denis, one of the main French spiritists of all times, he 
he shares with us in one of his books here and hereafter. In the Portuguese version, it's in page 282, and for anybody else, it's in chapter 49. He says, Love is the most superior feeling in which all qualities of the heart harmonize themselves. It is the crowning of all human virtues. We have a lot to learn from Jesus. This Jesus we're presenting here, dear listener, whether you are Jewish, Buddhist, or you don't have a, a main denominational religion, whatever it is your path, this Jesus is for everybody. The Jesus that Spiritism brings is all-encompassing, is non-sectarian, is loving. He didn't want to create a specific church organization or organized religions he actually wanted us to practice these teachings so he was the one and he's still the one that brings us this so called peace who does not want peace in the show today we're going to talk about how he achieved it how he brought it to us who he really is is he actually the savior is he God is he the only son of God, as people say? Is he the one that said that there are chosen people? Who is actually Jesus? Can he make a difference in our lives? Can we live better in 2012 by emulating him as Benjamin Franklin? When he wisely put together the 13 virtues, he said, humility is one of them, and said, imitate Socrates and Jesus. Why? Who is, the, who is this great and so humble Jesus? We're going to talk about here with dear friends, Kirsten DeMello, Julio Carvalho, and others. And you can also call us. You can call us also to ask a question. You can call at 858-769-4705. Kirsten DeMello is going to be there helping at the screen room, talking to you before we bring you in at Kardec Radio, so you can ask your question and make this program richer, and richer in the sense of of the feeling of nourishment for all the souls. Because you know, Kardec Radio is already in full 54 countries, and we are going to announce, after the first break, the winners of the No Solar DVD, and the beautiful comments that many people shared with us at Kardec Radio. And to give it a beautiful beginning, to this show, let us listen as we talk about Jesus and the peace, a message by Joana de Angelis in a book and CD by Rivaldo Franco and Joana de Angelis entitled Living and Loving. You can buy it at the, uh, ssbaltimore.org at its bookstore and it's all about peace and love. Let us listen to this, go to our first break and when we come back, we have a lot to share with you. It's a true banquet of light in love. Chapter 17 Always in Peace The violence that alarms mankind and bewilders the whole planet springs from the hidden aggressiveness within the hearts of people. It generates both instability and unhappiness. Any display of evil produces unexpected reactions that may lead to hopelessness and belligerence. Jesus advised, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. It was a warning to remind us to keep a balanced attitude and attend to our duties. Whatever the circumstances you might be struggling against, keep your peace. Be stern, but avoid rudeness. Enforce discipline, but avert violence. Promote education, but oppose aggressiveness. Whatever you do, do it peacefully. When mistreated or suffering, hold your peace at all costs so that you may keep your tranquility. Jesus was always calm, ineffable, and serene regardless of circumstances around him. Real peace is rooted in absolute confidence in God. Remain undisturbed. Do all the good you can and do not line up with those who complain, are violent or unreasonable. Your peace reveals your life 
as much as the way you live affects the environment around you. We will return to our program after these messages. <laughs> Looking for a gift this holiday season? Look no further. The CD or the book, Enlightening Messages, brings back a true meaning of the holiday season. Buy your copy online at www.ssbaltimore.org forward slash bookstore. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. Kardec Radio, live every Saturday at 11 a.m. On December 6th, Strand Releasing proudly releases on DVD the Brazilian blockbuster Astro City, A Spiritual Journey. Based on the best-selling book by medium Chico Xavier, the film tells the story of André Luiz, a successful doctor who experiences an enlightening spiritual awakening after his death. When he wakes up in the spiritual world, he embarks on a new journey of self-discovery and transformation. Buy your copy now. Contact us at www.strandreleasing.com. The newest edition of The Medium's Book by Alan Kardec is now available. Purchase your copy online or via your ebook reader. Simply go to www.edicifamerica.com today. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. Did you enjoy reading the classic story about Little Red Riding Hood? Then you'll love the spiritual spin on this classic tale. The Big Bad Wolf reincarnated by Ross Jess Singu is a great way to share new perspectives to your children about spiritism and the law of action and reaction. Purchase your copy online at www.ssbaltimore.org. Join us every Thursday live, Evolution in Two Worlds. A journey of the soul through the teachings of the spirit doctor, Andrea Luis. Connect at www.tvcei.com, channel 2. And now we return to our program. Dear listener, it's about a new mode for the new year. And you know, Kardec Radio is here to share also the winners of the DVD No Solar that was just released by Strain Releasing in the United States. This bestseller as a book and blockbuster as a movie in Brazil came to the United States and is conquering its territory and the whole world as well. And we had a challenge for people at Kardec Radio for almost two months. And five winners are here to share the good news that they won the DVD we're sending to them as a collaboration with Strength Releasing. It's Beatrice Jenkins. And thank you so much, Beatrice, for your beautiful comments. As you say, uh, what I like the most is that I can send the link of Kardec Radio to my friends who want to know more about Spiritism. And I'd like to know more about the basic books of Spiritism. Also, Frederico Lavia from Oregon, Portland. He also shared with us his comments, and he said, the fact that it is in English, I love it. And because I can have material to discuss with my English-speaking friends. And I'd like to hear more about all your books and novels in uh, Kardec Radio. We also have another winner, Best Terence from Maryland. She says, I love being able to access a vast array of speakers and talks on spiritism and related subjects anytime, as well as having a resource to refer others that is educational and easily accessible. I would love to hear talks or talk show on addiction from a spiritist perspective. As always, thank you so much for good work. And finally, Kevin Powell from North Carolina. He says that what I like best is that I can listen online. I can download segments using my iTunes account. It makes it so easy. 
Other talks I'd like to hear are about the use of spiritism's obsession techniques in the treatment of mental illness and other medical cases. We had our dear friends like Patty, Reverend Perry Pipia from Chicago, who also wrote to us. And she actually, the ones that wrote to us and were not the five winners, they're still going to win someday. We feel very generous and uh, loving here at Kardec Radio. We're going to send them as a gift the beautiful Enlightening Messages CD. So, Dr. Uh, Reverend Pipia, thank you for your comments about how much Kardec Soul feeds your soul. We're going to send it to you. Also, Patricia Wickers from Houston, Texas. Thank you so much for sending your comments. We're going to send you a CD. Carla Richardson is also uh, going to receive a CD from Enlightening Messages. Solomon Waters from London. Thank you so much for uh, sending your, your comments to us, participating in the challenge. Debbie Caron from Connecticut is receiving the Enlightening Messages CD. And uh, Shane Shanwell from... Uh, Circle Henrico, Virginia, Priscilla Morales from Delaware, and finally, Leila Alonso from Malden, Massachusetts. Dear friends, you have been sending many messages to Kardec Radio, and we are very, very, very thankful, because without your comments, we cannot improve, and also, it's helping us, motivating us to keep on walking, because we need to move forward. You know, Jesus came here and many people are still puzzled about what Jesus are we talking about in Spiritism. Let's go to the Gospel according to Spiritism, chapter 1. And item 4, Kardec says, Jesus' role, however, was not simply that of a moralistic lawgiver with no other authority than his own word. He actually came to fulfill the prophecies that had announced his coming. And his authority derived from the exceptional nature of his spirit and divine mission. No doubt about it. And if we want to know more about Jesus, go to the book Genesis by Allan Kardec, chapter 15. Actually, the whole book, it's about miracles. Last week, Dr. Cunning was sharing with us that the main advice, he said, this season, look for miracles. Jesus has come to bring us hope. Talking about miracles, this book, Genesis, is all about miracles and predictions. It says the subtitle, according to Alan Kardec, and in chapter 15, he talks about Jesus' nature. And in Kardec's own words, let's listen to this, because now we're going to learn that Jesus is not an actual Savior. He's not God, and he's not the only Son of God. Thank God. <laughs> That's the actual reality. Thank God, there's much more than that. And Kardec says in chapter 15 of the book Genesis, item 2, without any preconceptions as to the nature of Christ, which is beyond the scope of this investigative work, and considering Jesus hypothetically only as a highly evolved spirit, we must nonetheless recognize him as one of the highest order, and that Due to his virtues, he is placed far above earthly humanity because of the immense results that he produced. His incarnation on this world could only have been one of those missions that are entrusted to the direct messengers of the divinity in order to fulfill its designs. Even supposing that Christ was not God per se, but a messenger from God sent to transmit God's word, he would be more than a prophet, for he would be a divine Messiah. As a man, he had the bodily composition of corporeal beings, but as a pure spirit detached from matter, he would have lived the spirit life more than the corporeal life, the weaknesses of which we would not have had. He would not have had. The superiority of Jesus over other humans was not linked to the particularities of his body, but to those of his spirit, which dominated matter completely, and that of his spirit, which was drawn from the most quintessential portion of earth's fluids. To understand more of this, go to chapter 14, item 9. 
Jesus' soul must not have been connected to his body except by strictly indispensable ties. And since it was constantly detached, it must have given him a second sight that was not only continuous but exceptionally penetrating, far superior to anything seen among ordinary human beings. Such must have also been the case regarding all the phenomena that depend on the perispiritual or psychic fluids. The quality of these fluids endowed him with an immense magnetic power, seconded by his incessant desire to do good. Did Jesus act as a medium in the healings he performed? Could he be considered a, a powerful healing medium? No, because a medium is an intermediary, an instrument that discarnate spirits use. Jesus Christ, however, had no need of assistance. He was the only the one who assisted others. Therefore, he acted by himself in virtue of his own personal power, just as incarnates can do in certain cases and according to the measure of their abilities. Moreover, what other spirit would have dared to insufflate him with his its own thoughts and charge him with transmitting them? If he did receive an outside influx, it could only have been from God. According to the definition given by one spirit, Christ was God's medium. Dear listener, these are Kardec's very, very words. In this program, it's very illuminating. In the book Genesis by Ellen Kardec, chapter 15, we have the whole nine yards of who Jesus was. And to understand more what Jesus is all about, because he came here to console, to comfort, and to help all of us. We're going now, before we bring Julia Carvalho here, to talk to us about more on the depth of the Jesus message. We're going to stream to you a beautiful case from the book Heaven and Hell by Alan Kardec. In this show, we're talking about the five main books of Alan Kardec, from the Spirit's Good to, book to the Genesis. And this is a case on beautiful Max the Bagger. He talks about the transformation of a soul from life to life. As Jesus came about, he explained that we are here to conquer the kingdom of heaven, which is inside of our souls. And then we are going to bring after the case Kirsten de Mello to talk to us. We're going to discuss the Spiritist view on Jesus on this passage, Max the Beggar. Dear listener, enjoy this passage. It's all about a mode that is infallible for the new year. Let us listen. From the book Heaven and Hell by Alan Kardec, Max the Beggar. In a Bavarian village around the year 1850, an old man known as Father Max died at nearly 100 years of age. No one really knew where he came from, for he had no family. For around half a century, stricken by infirmities that rendered him unable to earn a living. He had no other resources but public charity, which he had disguised by selling almanacs and other trinkets among the farmhouses and castles. He was given the nickname Count Max, and children addressed him only by that title, which made him smile without taking offense. Why this title? No one knew. But custom had sanctioned it. Perhaps? It was on account of his appearance and manners, whose refinement contrasted with his rags. Many years after his death, Max appeared in a dream to the daughter of the owner of one of the castles, where he had been allowed to lodge in for the stable, for he had no place of residence. He said to her, Thank you. Thank you for having remembered poor Max in your prayers, for the Lord has heard them. You are a charitable soul who has taken an interest in an unfortunate beggar, and you would like to know who I was. I will satisfy your wish. It will be the greatest instruction to all. Then he gave the following account in roughly these terms. About a century and a half ago, I was rich and a powerful lord in this region, but I was vain, proud, and infatuated with my nobility. I never used my huge fortune for anything but to satisfy my pleasures. My fortune was barely enough, for I was a gambler, and a reckless individual, and spent my life in orgies. 
my vassals, whom I deemed worthy of being used, but lose, used like my vassals, whom I deemed worthy of being used like farm animals, were exploited and mistreated to provide my extravagances. I remained deaf to their complaints, as was the case with all their unfortunate beings, who, in my opinion, ought to consider themselves very honored at my satisfying whims. I died at a young age, exhausted by my excess, but without having truly experienced any real misfortune. On the contrary, everything seemed to smile on me to such a degree that I passed as one of the most favored beings on earth. My social position entitled me to a lavish funeral, but not a tear was shed at my tomb, nor a heartfelt prayer said to God on my behalf, and my memory was cursed by all those whose misery I had contributed to. How terrible it was the curse of the unfortunate beings whom once had harmed. The curse never ceased ringing through my ears throughout the long years that seemed like an eternity. And after the death of one of my victims, there was a new threatening or a sarcastic face appearing before me to hound me without respite and without my being able to be in a dark corner in which to hide from its sight. Not one friendly glance. My old companions in the debauchery as unhappy as I was, fled from me, and seemed to say in scorn, You no longer pay for our pleasures. Oh, what I would have paid for in a moment of repose? For a glass of water to quench my burning thirst that devoured me. But I did not possess anything anymore, and all the gold that I had scattered with my handfuls upon the earth didn't produce a single blessing, not one. You see, my child, finally, Overcome by fatigue, exhausted like a weary traveler who could not foresee the end of his journey, I cried. My God, have mercy on me. When will this excruciating situation end? Then a voice came. The first that I heard after having left on earth said to me, When you will it. What must I do, great God? I replied. Please tell me. I will submit myself to anything. You must repent, my son. You must humble yourself before those whom you humiliated. Ask them to pray for you. For the prayer of the offended, who forgive, is always pleasing to the Lord. So I humbled myself, and I begged for forgiveness of my vassals and my servants. They appeared before me. They appeared before me. Their faces little by little, becoming more kindly and finally disappearing altogether. It was as if I had become granted a new life. Desperation gave many ways to hope as I was thankful to my God. With all the strength in my soul, the voice added, Prince, to which I responded, There is no other prince here but the Almighty God, who humbles the howdy. Forgive me, Lord, for I have sinned. And if it is your will, Make me the servant of my servants. A few years later, I was born once more, but this time into the family of poor villagers. My parents died while I was still a child, and I was alone and without help in the world. I made a living however I could, sometimes as a farmhand or sometimes as a workman, but always honestly because I believed in God this time. At the age of 40, an illness befell me and rendered me completely crippled, and I had to beg for more than fifty years in the same lands over which I had been an absolute lord. I was happy to receive a morsel of bread on the farms that I had once possessed, and where, by bitty irony, I had been given the nickname of Count Max. I was very fortunate to often find shelter in the stables of the very castle that had once been mine. While I slept, I took pleasure in roaming the same castle, where I had reigned as a despot. How many times in my dreams. I saw myself and missed my old fortune. Upon waking, such visions left me with an undefined feeling of bitterness and sadness. But not one complaint ever escaped my lips. And when it pleased God to call me to Him, I praised Him for having given me the courage to undergo without complaint such a long and painful trial. For which today I have received my reward. As for you, my child, I bless you for having prayed for me. Dear listener, it's all about humility. Max the Count 
learned that he actually needed to acquire new virtues. So here we have with us Kirsten DeMello as a part of the team at Kardec Radio, and she's here with us so we can talk more. Hi, Kirsten. Thank you so much for being with us here, and especially to making time to discuss the case of Max the Beggar. Hi, Vanessa. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure to discuss spiritism for sure. We know that. Yeah, I mean, this case about Max the Beggar talks about the pride that he felt about the position that he had temporarily, the wealth he had. And then we're talking about the spiritist view on Jesus. It's amazing, Kirsten, that Emmanuel, through the mediumship of uh, Chico Xavier, in the book that is yet to be translated into English, but is entitled A Camino da Luz, probably in the past to light and in the future, he talks about in the first paragraph that Jesus, amongst other Christ-like spirits, was in charge of building planet Earth and governing it. So we're talking about someone, a spirit, as Kardec said, of far superior nature that came to the humblest uh, of all the people at the time who were enslaved by the Roman Empire, the, the, the Hebrews, and amongst the humblest, he became really the humblest and the most superior in the virtue of all virtues in humanity. So what do you think about this interesting case and uh, how it matches what we're talking about Jesus? I, you know, when we listen to this case and we study it, what, what comes to mind is that wise is the one who learned from the mistakes of others. So these cases are so significant because uh, we believe that in the process of them, uh, the good and noble spirits beforehand putting together the works of Kardec before he even came into fruition in this world, that we look at examples because they help us to um, follow. They help us to see how we should live our lives and what happens if we don't. So we look at this case of Max the beggar, and it's wonderful for us to look at and say, this is what's going to happen if we have too much pride and not enough humility. I believe it's um, a chapter that's entitled, Blessed are the Poor in the Gospel According to Spiritism, where they share with us that pride is what keeps us farthest from God. Pride and all these ego, which is the opposite of humility. So we see that we want to be closer to God. We want to be closer to Jesus. But if we have too much of this pride like Max the beggar did, we are the farthest we will ever be from God. And it's an it's a great case for us to look at and say, you know, I don't want to end up like that. I don't want to have to go through all of that suffering just to learn that I need to be more humble and that it's not a bad thing. I think oftentimes when we, we look at humility as something in, with a negative connotation, that humiliation, well, I, I want to, our pride speaks so much louder sometimes than the voice of good in us. You know, oftentimes our, our bad tendencies over many lifetimes, unfortunately, are very difficult for us to combat. But little by little, working on little things, Exactly. You to conquer, yeah. No, go ahead. Little by little, we begin to conquer with little things, and we just gain more, you know, moral courage um, to endure all things in our lives. But humility is such an important thing because it really helps us to give a broader vision. Sometimes when we think of the actual act of humiliating ourselves, we think of the act of bending down. And when we think about that bending down, perhaps may not give us this uh, physical broader vision, but in actuality it gives us the greatest vision. As you bow yourself down, you actually are bringing yourself up because you have a much more broader perspective and you don't have the blindness of ego and pride leading you. Exactly. Yeah, yeah we agree. And it, when we talk about humility, as you said, he, you know, and the fact that Max was like the count and he, and he said the problem is that he was so proud that he was not just because he didn't respect the rights of others. He humiliated them. He was thinking that he was superior, superior than them. And if we go to the Spirit's book, to the Law of Justice, Charity, and Love, on the third part of it, which, by the way, we... Um, had a beautiful study session uh, coordinated by Cinta Fabretti 
um, at Spiritism for Everyone, which are beautiful sessions coordinated by Cita Fabretti with the U.S. Spiritist Council every Wednesday evening. And you can uh, log on to spiritist.us and get to know more about it. At that session, we're talking about the law of justice, sharing, and love. And if we go there, uh, we learn that to be just is to respect the right of others. And Max, the count, clearly stated, he realized in the afterlife, he was not just enough. So his pride actually blurred his understanding of the fulfillment of God's laws. Because as the spirits explained in this very chapter we are mentioning in the spirits book about the law of justice, sharing, and love, it says that we uh, blur the sense of justice when we are too proud of ourselves, passions, degrading passions. And and that's what he said. He was always like partying around and people cursing, talking about the new year. How many people, when they go from Christmas to New Year, Christmas they talk about being kind and charitable. By New Year's Eve, everybody's like, I want to enjoy my life and be happy by drinking all the way until like 6 a.m., and they think happiness is going to come after a lot of partying and a lot of uh, sometimes reckless behaviors. And here we have Max the Count and later Max the Beggar sharing us with us that that's not how you actually find happiness, don't you think? Right, absolutely. I think oftentimes, unfortunately, because out of our ignorance and bad tendencies, bad habits we have for many lifetimes, we have this illusion that external things will fill the void within us because we have this necessity to connect with the higher power. It's, it's in us. You know, the laws of God are written in our conscience. Our conscience calls to us to fill ourselves with something, and oftentimes we fill ourselves with things that are no good. Because of bad tendencies, whether it's we fill ourselves with bad thoughts, bad actions, or what have you, and oftentimes culturally, it's common for people to engage in certain activities around certain holidays, and socially it's acceptable. And we're not judging here, not at all, because none of us are perfect at all. We're not throwing stones here. We're just making observations, right, for educational purposes, but... Because we don't know what that feeling of true happiness is, we sometimes we get stuck in this loop of behavior that fills us up for a time until we wind up like Max, in a sense. And one day we will disincarnate and go to the other side and wake up. Some people wake up during this incarnation with the help of others, with the help of their family, or with the help of trials and tribulation. But ultimately, the true happiness are not these external, physical things that we do, especially ones that are bad for our health, that do not help us in the long run, but they are the the immutable things of God, that the blessings from beyond that are truly most enriching. You know, Vanessa, in the book Nosola, they, they talk about this nourishment, that love in higher planes is a, is a form of nourishment, and we think about that. What are we nourishing our souls with? Not just in the physical as the food that we eat, but the nourishment from the books that we read. Um, and we, we know that when we listen to Kardec Radio, how good we feel, that the episodes are truly nourishing for our soul, souls. And when we go to our spiritual center, we feel so nourished, um, right? And we feel so mm-hmm. good about, the, about these teachings. Exactly. And, and as you say about Spiritist Center, for people who want to begin the new year in a new mode, you know, going to Spiritist Center, excuse me, saying, is a good option because Spiritist Centers are educational places for us. And not only for us to receive spiritual treatment, not only for us to have a community of like minded minds, but mostly, as Kirsten said, to set into this. Uh, different mode of life, this lifestyle that is truly nourishing. And if you are somewhere out there in this planet and you want to know where there is a center nearby, go to the International Spiritist Council website, www.intercei.com. It is I-N-T-E-R-C-E-I.com. If you're in the United States, go to the United States Spiritist Council uh, website, uh, www. 
spiritist.us. If you're in Canada, the Canadian Spiritist Council can give you a hint. And if you are in uh, England, go to the website of the British Union of the Spiritist Societies. You're going to make new friends and you're going to start there 2012 and continue it in the highest tone and mode. So, Kirsten, as we wrap up this conversation on the Max the Bagger case in the book Heaven and Hell by Kardec, what would you say could be the take-home message from this experience of Max the Count, Max the Bagger, to us into this new year? I, I would say that daily reflect on how humble we are being in our day to day and, and watch our thoughts. Because if indeed pride is one of the sentiments, one of the ways of being in our lives that keeps us farthest from God, how often are we working on that and telling ourselves, remind ourselves, okay, I want to be more humble. And let it be a mantra. This would be, should be the take home message. Let that be a mantra in our lives. I want to be more humble because we know thoughts have power. And willpower can have a deep emotion. We can modify our lives in small ways and thus in larger ways. So that, I believe, would be a take-home message from, from our perspective here to let that be your mantra. I will, and coming in for the new year, I will, let us be more humble, less prideful, and more working more on ourselves on a day-to-day basis. That, that would be the proposition we have for all of us in the new year. All right, that's a beautiful mantra. I want to be more humble. That's a good suggestion, Kirsten. Thank you so much for being with us at Kardec Radio and for sharing these reflections. Thank you. Thank you. So, dear listener, what a beautiful mantra. I want to be more humble. You know, to be humble means to be more just because we don't need to correct the world. We need to respect the rights of others to be just, as according to the spirits in the Spirits book by Alan Kardec, the law of justice, charity, and love. People are who they are, and as Kirsten suggested, as we practice this mantra, I want to be more humble, we are going to dive more deeply into our true nature and transform ourselves as we change Everything changes around us. So how about now giving another short break so you can get to know more about books, CDs, DVDs that are out there and events as well that are out there for you to nourish your soul in this new year, whether you're going to be in the incarnate plane or the discarnate, because life actually goes on. We will return to our program after these messages. Enjoy this new release. Reborn for Love, by the renowned Brazilian scientist and researcher on reincarnation, Dr. Anani Andrade. This novel describes one of the most extraordinary and genuine cases of reincarnation ever studied by Dr. Andrade's Brazilian Institute of Psychobiophysics Research in Sao Paulo State. Order your copy now at roundtable.uk at gmail.com or at www.roundtablepublishing-uk.com. Spiritist Network, your gateway to on-demand Spiritist videos, www.spiritistnetwork.com. Spread the word, Kardec Radio, to learn more about Spiritism. Want to find a good way to explain life after physical death to kids or teenagers? Check out the book, Message from a Teen in the Spirit World, by the spirit Nail Lucio and Psychograph by Chico Xavier. In this book, a teenager named Carlos explains his impressions on the new life in the spirit realm with his discarnate relatives and new friends. Purchase your copy online at www.ssbaltimore.org. The Spiritist Magazine is a trimestral, digital periodical that publishes the latest news on the Spiritist thought and the movement in the USA and worldwide. Subscribe now at www.spiritistmagazine.com.
In the book, A Primer on Being Good by the Spirit May May, psychographed by the medium Shiko Shaviar, explains in simple language appropriate for children two paths in life, the path of good or the path of evil. God has granted us the freedom to choose either one. Purchase your copy online at www.ssbaltimore.org. Now we return to our program. Dear listener, what a beautiful mode to begin 2012. It's all about our guide and model in this earth, <clears throat> Jesus. Jesus is the guide and model according to the illuminated spirits in the spirit book, question 625, and its answer is very straightforward. Jesus is our therapist, our doctor, our governor, our friend our guided model. By the way, you're going to get to know more about it in the U.S. Spiritist Symposium in Atlanta next year. Go to the website, spiritistsymposium.org, get to know more about the beautiful program that the United States Spiritist Council has put together. And right now, we have a, a beautiful conversation with our dear Julio Carvalho. Julio Carvalho first, first encountered Spiritism when he was about 14 years old. Then he has become an active participant in the U.S. Spiritist movement. He co-founded the Spiritist Center Divine Light in New, Newark, New Jersey, in which he coordinates uh, groups of friends and uh, became a speaker, disseminating the message, not only in the tri-state, but also in everywhere and elsewhere in the United States. And professionally, he is a mental health counselor at Uni County Jail in New Jersey. And he is here with us to talk more about Jesus. Let us listen to this beautiful conversation. Julia, we're very honored that you're here with us, sharing what you have learned from Spiritism, and especially sharing with us the Spiritist view on Jesus, there's so much to learn. And the main thing that comes to our minds is Jesus' teachings and examples, they truly divided humankind's history. But in the Spiritist view, how can we understand this impact of Jesus in the whole world? First of all, I want to thank the Kardec Radio producers for the invitation. And also, I want to thank our listeners uh, for taking their time to listen to our conversation. Your question is indeed very important to us all because Jesus is an uncommon figure in our history. But the way Spiritism explains how Jesus divided our history, it's because before Jesus Christ, uh, we considered the blessed people those who were rich, powerful, and all healthy as people understood that God gave them special protection since they were born blessed that way. After Jesus, our way of understanding the blessings of God were completely changed. Now, blessed were the afflicted. Blessed were the people pure in heart. So with Jesus, our perception of being blessed it's much different. What we consider tragedies or even that God has forgotten us, it's completely changed with Jesus Christ's teaching. Spiritism explains that all of us who are in great pain and in great suffering are receiving from life an opportunity to atone our mistake from our past lives, our difficulties, our misery, our sadness, are nothing less but the result of our yesterday's action. And none of us are forgotten by our Father. So the Spiritist perspective on how Jesus changed our view of the world and our little world is that difficulties and hardships are nothing less but opportunities of growth because a perfect God could not have created his creatures to suffer forever. As a result, we have received the blessing of life to grow towards him, towards perfection, towards God. And Jesus' way is 
the way to grow towards God by perfecting ourselves. It's very inspirational, Julio. You're right. Uh, all his teachings are always about reminding us of the, the blessings of the challenges of life as well. And, you know, many people get confused for the fact that they say, oh, you Christians, you bring suffering on you thinking that you're going to grow. That's not what exactly happens, right? Amongst the teachings of Jesus, we cannot say that suffering is the highlight. Would you say that there is one main teaching amongst all and including his examples that could summarize and be the guidepost of his teachings. I understand your comment, and I definitely understand why people think that way. Uh, that Jesus uh, and Christianity uh, bring suffering as it's uh, the utmost importance uh, of what we convey to others. But in reality, the only reason why we suffer it's because we don't leave, uh, we don't live in our lives common teachings of Christ. You know, what Christ taught us, these are natural laws that we must follow. And the only reason there is pain in our lives is because we fail to follow natural laws. And Christ is a divine messenger, a messenger of the creator of the universe. And he revealed to us laws that we must abide ourselves to, otherwise we must suffer. So the only reason we speak so much of suffering, it's because yet we don't follow the laws. God, uh, Jesus, did not uh, teach us how to suffer, but rather he taught us how to love. And unfortunately, because we don't love, we have pain in our lives. So the main teaching of Christ that summarizes all of his teachings is to love God beyond our things and our neighbor like we love ourselves. Why does that summarize all teachings? Well, first of all, uh, to love God, it's almost impossible without loving each other ourselves. And if we don't love uh, each other properly, it's impossible to love ourselves. So first of all, we love ourselves and we love each other. In that way, we'll be loving God. So that teaching of Christ summarizes all of his teachings. Uh, love. Now, love here, uh, we must clarify that it's not a feeling, but rather an action. Uh, we do nice things to other people. Uh, we don't expect uh, no respect, but we give respect. We give our best. For example, let's say you have a neighbor, and usually if your neighbor doesn't say good morning to you, you don't say good morning to your neighbor. You're expecting your neighbor to first respond to you. Well, to love your neighbor, literally, would be the one to start by saying good morning and wish that neighbor an excellent day. Therefore, you're practicing the law of love by uh, conveying this respectful action in the morning. So Jesus' teaching of loving one another summarizes all of his teachings. Yeah, and you're talking about love, and one of the things that he taught us, and he actually exemplified because it's beyond words. You know, many people talk about masters here and there, everywhere. We acknowledge them, and Spiritism even teaches us that all these other masters, they belong to the team of the Christ. But many of them just spoke about it, whereas Jesus went beyond just words. He exemplified, and one of the things, as you're saying, love, that he not only taught us, but he exemplified, was the love for enemies. But it's so hard, and people are like, what is this? Somebody kills my son, and I'm going to love the murderer of my son? And you, Julio, based on your work experience, uh, if you don't mind uh, sharing with them in giving some examples of how this could be applied, this Jesus' teaching and exemplification of love for enemies, how would Spiritism interpret this love for our enemies? Sure, when Christ mentioned that we should love our enemies, he did not intend it that we must have the same feelings that we have for someone who has betrayed us, for someone who has harmed us, the same kind of feelings that we have for a friend who is constantly helping and guiding us. That's not what loving our enemy is all about. It is almost physically, emotionally impossible to have the same kind of tenderness that you have for an enemy that you have for a friend. So once again, a love here, it's not a feeling. It's an action. The way Spiritism interprets the loving enemy lesson 
is that we must not wish evil for those who have harmed us. If someone has given to me a, a painful experience, I should love him by understanding, by comprehending, yet I am not agreeing with what the other person did to me. What I am doing, I'm giving the other person an opportunity to show his humanity, which is his flaws. Yet, I don't agree with what he did with me. But I am not happy when something wrong happens with the other person. If I happen to know that my enemy has suffered a car accident, I am not jumping up and down out of happiness because it happened to him. I am not rejoicing with his misery. When I do this, when I instead have compassion for his mistakes, because with spiritism I understand the one who truly suffers is the person who does the negative action, not the person who receives the negative action. Anyone who does the negative action would have to uh, live the consequences of their actions. Therefore, the pain that was delivered to me will come back to that other person. And I am could be atoning a mistake that I have done in my, in my past by going through this negative experience. When I love my enemy then, I give him an opportunity uh, to be who he is, but I demand for myself to be better than him. I'm not rejoicing with his disgrace. I am feeling pity that he has done what he has done. When I love my enemy, I would not be on the following day have dinner with me because that would be a hypocrisy. What I'm doing here, I am simply not wishing him evil. Now, mention about my job. I am a mental health worker at a Union County Jail, and basically what I have to do, I have to speak uh, to any inmate who are having any kind of psychological problems. And, of course, uh, there are many who see me because, you know, they are hating people for what they have done to them. Uh, no, the classical situation might be uh, of someone who a cousin or a brother have been killed, have been murdered outside, and yet they are inside the jail system, and, and there's nothing they can do about it. And they feel useless. And what I try to tell them is that if they keep hating the other person who has, has done that to their relative, all of they are doing is they are worsening their own pain. They are not helping the discarded spirit on the other side, and they are not helping their family as well. Uh, their family needs their patience. Uh, their family needs their comprehension in, in order for him to be uh, a helping source instead of someone else adding to the misery that everyone is going through. Now, obviously, when I ask this person to uh, comprehend, when I ask this person to understand, I'm not asking this person to love whoever murdered their relative because uh, it's... Uh, it's very easy for us to provide medication for someone without taking that medication ourselves. It's very bitter for someone. <laughs> Usually you hear people say, you know, you must forgive, you must forgive, you must forgive, but they have <laughs> no clue what the other person is going through. Mm -hmm. And as a result, uh, the person completely misunderstands the point. And I think that one of the reasons people nowadays, there's a lot of people who are in a complete disbelief of Christianity and the lessons of Jesus, it's because they tend to generalize uh, the religious people with Christ themselves. And when religious people have the wrong interpretation of these lessons, they completely throw the person off course. Uh, Jesus did not intend that we should, you know, uh, be as friend with our enemy as we are with our true friends. But we should understand them and not rejoice with their misery. And that's where I ask from these people who are going through this painful experience in the jail system. I tell them that, uh, that it's, it's not up to them to retaliate what has done to their relative because if they do seek retaliation, they are lowering themselves to the other person's level. Exactly. Something to really to know. It's quite interesting. And it takes time too, right? As you observe in your work, it probably takes time. Probably you have the experience of seeing somebody who was filled with hatred. And as you counsel them, you see that if they really adjust themselves to the advice, they can little by little conquer uh, higher levels of understanding and uh, shifting what they are feeling regarding to 
the people who they consider enemies. So time is yes. a good remedy too, right? Yes. Uh, when they understand the fact that by hating someone, what you're actually doing, you're you're allowing the other individual to tell you how you should live your life. What hatred is, it's you giving someone who doesn't like you the power to control your life. Now, you wouldn't do that to someone who already proved to you that they don't like you. You know, It's not wise for you to do such a thing. If you keep hating someone, you are allowing the other individual to tell you how you should live. Because what we do in life, it's based on our emotions. So if I hate someone, I am allowing that person to tell me how I should live my life. So you try to make the other person understand by comprehending the other person's mistake, by understanding how sick they are, you are truly liberating yourself from the real prison, which is hate. You know, I always uh, tell them that the walls that are keeping their body incarcerated, that's not the prison. The prison is our mental attitude. You know, I tell them that there are millions of people out there who are in a constant state of hatred. It could be a hatred because of someone else's color, because of what they have done to you, your social position, or what they, uh, or how they have betrayed you, or for the things that they have. And you're constantly thinking about these people. You could be in Cancun, uh, sitting by a beach, uh, and uh, <laughs> someone might look at you and think that you're having the greatest time, and yet all you're doing, you're allowing this person who have harmed you to control your thoughts and your actions, your feelings, your entire destiny is surrounded based on the effect of what this other person has done to you. So to forgive someone is to actually liberate yourself from that prison because wherever you go, you're taking that prison with you. So to me, that's the real prison, not the, the, the walls they're holding their bodies. You're right, Julio, and this is really an invitation for the new year. Dear listener, we have the last part of our conversation with Julio Carvalho about the Spiritist view on Jesus right after this break, and we may open for a question before we wrap up the show. By the way, we have announced the, the winners of the No Solar DVD at the beginning of the program, and we're going to mail them to you and to the other ones who actually uh, took the challenge at Kardec Radio. You're not going to receive the DVD, but you're going to receive a compliment from Kardec Radio, the beautiful CD, Enlightening Messages. And wait on until the end, because we have a beautiful track entitled Divine Surprise through the hands of Chico Xavier, which beautifully explains this new mode for 2012. Let's go to the break and come back for more. We will return to our program after these messages. <laughs> Looking for a gift this holiday season? Look no further. The CD or the book, Enlightening Messages, brings back a true meaning of the holiday season. Buy your copy online at www.ssbaltimore.org forward slash bookstore. Would you like to liberate yourself from your life struggles or to find inner balance? The Inner Journey CD has three beautiful visualizations that will help you bring harmony to your life. As Joanna D'Angeli tells us to, live in a way that you leave enlightening footprints in your pathway as if they were stars pointing out the pathway to happiness. To find the CD, go to the bookstore on the Spiritist Society of Baltimore webpage www.ssbaltimore.org that is www. S S B A L T I M O R E dot O R G and start your inner journey today. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. Now in English, the book Action and Reaction by the Spirit Andrea Louise, psychographed by Chico Xavier. Buy your copy online or via your ebook reader. Go to www.edicefamerica.com today. 
state the date for the 6th U.S. Spiritist Symposium that will be held at the Rialto Center for the Arts at Georgia State University in Atlanta, Georgia on Saturday, May 12, 2012. This year's topic is Love and Enlightenment, a Pathway to Self-Healing. Come out and enrich your mind, body, and soul. For more info, go to www.spiritistsymposium.org. And now we return to our program. Show today. We are truly moved about what we are learning in the show today. It's about the Spiritist view on Jesus. There's a lot to learn. Kardec's books talk about it extensively. As you can go back to the program, get it on demand at iTunes.com, go to KardecRadio.com and listen to it again and share this beautiful way of setting the mode for 2012. He's our guide and model. If we want to know how to be happy, we need to fulfill God's laws. And by if we are confused how to do it, let's check on our guide and model. And now... We're going to have uh, the final uh, conversation with Julio Carvalho about the Spiritist view on Jesus. And Julio, we have been talking about the Jesus view uh, from the Spiritist perspective. And we're going to begin the new year. And as we talked to Kirsten DeMello at Christmas, people are like, oh, I want to be charitable, help people, be more kind, kinder and gentle. But then by new year, People think about only the material things. They forget. It's all about, I want to lose weight. I want to get a new car, which is not a problem. But is there a better way? What would you say as your final comments to to help us set the tone for the new year inspired by the Spiritist view on Jesus? We all crave peace. We all want happiness. So the past 24th, we collectively celebrated Christmas, uh, the birth of Christ. But in reality, uh, that birth did not yet take place in individuals' hearts. For all of us who are bitter, who are depressed, who are constantly complaining, who are fully unhappy, Jesus yet did not born. Christmas yet did not happen to us. We should understand that Christmas is an individual experience when we allow Jesus to be born within us. Not Jesus, the person, but what Jesus represents, love, justice, and truth. Now, when we study the story of Christmas, there are many symbols to be learned. And the basic symbol is is that uh, Joseph and Mary, they tried to get all to, to these different inns, but they couldn't. And that's because the owner of the inns were saving the spaces, were saving bedrooms for people who could pay them more money. Because when they looked at, at Joseph and Mary, they, they looked at this poor couple and they could, could tell that they had nothing to pay. So they kept looking until they found uh, the manger. And the manger, it's it's very simple and a humble place. So Jesus from the get-go teaches a humility. And our hearts, in order to have Jesus born within us, needs to be converted as the manger was. Until we have pride and selfishness within us, Jesus would not be born. He would remain unborn. Mary and Joseph will keep looking uh, for a place for Jesus to be born. And unfortunately, our hearts would not uh, be uh, a good place to be born because pride and selfishness are incompatible with charity and humbleness. So for the upcoming year, instead of us worrying so much about the things that we need to achieve in our financial perspective, in our physical perspective, in our professional perspective, we should reconsider to make our hearts humble enough so the truth, love, and justice could finally be born within us. And since if we try to 
to achieve what the essence of our life's supposed to be, progress, evolvement, all the other things will follow, our profession, our health, our family, because we're truly fulfilling the purpose of our, of our life, which is spiritual growth. So uh, I plead for my listeners to reconsider their path of happiness, which is so much associated with what we have instead of who we are. So his spiritism brings back the message of Jesus. And in simplicity, the way he gave it to us, telling us that we should not overcome other people, but we must overcome ourselves. Thank you so much for your attention, Vanessa and Kardec Radio listeners. Thank you, Julio, so much for being here, and we wish you a wonderful 2012 and also to the center in New Jersey and the work you have been leading there. And we hope that we can have you back here in the year 2012 for much more so our listeners can learn more about Spiritism. Thank you, Julio. Thank you. The honor was all mine. Dear listener, we're so blessed to have many good collaborators at Kardec Radio. By the way, if you don't know who they are and if you want to join us, go to kardecradio.com. Read the tab about Kardec Radio and you're going to get to know how many people across the United States and elsewhere, even in London, have been helping Kardec Radio. And you can do too. And you know, don't go away because we have a beautiful end for the show. And you know what? Do you want to know how we're going to begin the new year at Kardec Radio? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you in a week we're going to have here a beautiful show with Divaldo Franco. Divaldo Franco is going to be here, the great Brazilian spiritist medium. He is going to be a Kardec Radio bringing to us what? The understanding on Kardec as the role model of cultural competency. We need to be culturally competent to be good bridges on this planet. And that's what Jesus was. He was a beautiful bridge from God to us and he still is. So come back in a week and listen to what Devaldo Franco has to share with us about it. And right now we're going to open quickly the line to Selenia Shepard who is in Pennsylvania and she's here to make a comment about this show. Hi, Selenia. Thank you so much for joining Kardec Radio. Well, thank you so much, Vanessa. This is such a great gift for all of us. Kardec uh. Radio has been an inspirational show all throughout, and I just think it's going to be, a, you know, a great way to start the new year. It was the best, you know, for this year, and um, I just know it's going to continue to do well. It's just been such an inspirational show for all of us, and it's given us strength here, you know, going through uh, certain areas of pain here and stuff. And it's been just wonderful hearing the inspirational stories. And, you know, you guys are doing such a wonderful job. And just, we wanted to let you know, please keep it up. And, you know, we need you. <laughs> oh, Selenia, thank you so much for sharing. You know how strong and courageous you are in your battle uh, together with Steve, and you and Steve have been great inspiration for us as well. So thank you so much for being at Kardec Radio. If, if there is anything else you want to share with uh, our listener as a wish for the to, the year of 2012 that is going to begin? Oh, I just hope and wish that everyone has the most healthiest, the most loving year. And if we uh, do, you know, as, as Jesus has taught us, it will be a wonderful year for all, and just wanting the best for everyone. And uh, to thank all the speakers and everyone, the guests who have come in, for all their love that they shared, and just just to thank you all. And I'll know it will be a great year for everyone. Thank you, Selenia. And a big hug to you and Steve and to everyone there. Happy New Year to you. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> All right, dear listener, here we have it. More friends sharing good news. This is the best part. Jesus also has recommended that we make friends, true friends, friends that build good things together, build things for others. The true friends are the ones that join together to build good times for other people as well. So 
As we are about to wrap up the show today, we'd like to remind you that in a week, we're going to be in a new year at Kardec Radio, which is turning six months. Yeah. And many good things are happening. We're going to have new programs, new features, new hosts, new times of the week. Can you believe it? There is a lot ahead, and we need your help. Send in your comments. Send in to kardecradio.com. We have a form online. Or if you want, kardecradio at gmail.com, and we're going to listen to you. By the way, we're going to share that, you know, even in the beyond, we have loving minds who love Jesus as well. And recently, through a mediumship, uh, a poet of the beyond inspired in this new year as we were talking about setting the mold for the new year with Jesus he says to us in kind of a poetic way he says oh master how much we miss you we miss your compassionate look your healing hands your comforting word your kind promise oh we want to meet you in the new year and cherish your encouraging company Amongst the suffering and the hungry and the thirsty and everyone we meet. May we never miss you again in the new year. This is a message from the poet of the beyond. The discarnate spirits also are preparing themselves to the new journey of a new year to come. And to talk about how to deeply meditate about this, we're now going to Kindly as a gift to you, in gratitude to you, dear listener, to all of our amazing guests throughout the five months of the existence of Kardec Radio on the earth, and also to all the people who collaborated with Kardec Radio, from the producers to all the collaborators, we're going to stream this beautiful prayer message through the hands of Chico Xavier. It's entitled Divine Surprise. Divine Surprise Good and fraternal soul, if the impulse to pray blesses you, whenever you wish to pray to seek the Lord's security, do it anywhere. The entire earth is an open temple for the inspiration that pours from heaven. But to find the master that you seek, dear soul, come down to life's valley of tears, where comfort is late to arrive, where the pain of indignance and the tears of widowhood roam along the path's edges, extending a strong arm to the ones who wander without direction and who are lost in the nostalgia of the home life that has disappeared. Listen to the ones who go during the cold and windy night without being able to tell about their own suffering. They hunger for care and understanding. Stop and hug the child that is consumed by disdain and wiped out by disease. Stop and assist in clothing, healing, and feeding this small flower. Hear the cry of the sick person who has nothing but dust and tears as a bed in a narrow corner in the land of no one. Be aware of the cries of those in the height of anguish, the sad hearts torn apart by slander. Go where there is affliction, offering to each sufferer a gift of love, and there you will see a divine light sweetly irradiating peace, goodness, and joy. From this light, the deepest part of your trusting soul will hear Jesus tenderly say, Dear soul, come. I hear your voice in prayer everywhere. I must, however, await you in the fields of goodness. You said I was right in knowing that God loves and understand through you. You look so far away for me, and all along I await you close by. Good soul, I am here.
Dear listener, happy 2012 with Jesus in our minds, hearts, and hands. May God bless us all. Thank you for listening to Kardec Radio, broadcasting live every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Email us and share your comments at www.kardecradio.com. Until next time, we wish you many blessings.